Have you ever been conned? What did you do after getting conned? Were you able to recover your money? Well, if you have not been conned before, I have been conned two times. Yeah, I have been conned before, not once, but two times. Yeah, so this is my story. Apparently, the first time and the second time I was conned, people well known to me were involved, so I didn't see it coming. And it found me in a space in my life where I, I thought maybe I am immune to con artists because I mean I have spent the rest the, 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 the rest of my life like I've spent all my life until this time and I've never been conned. So I've had different con stories. So I think I can be able to detect a con uh, from a distance before they even get to me. That's what I thought, but oh my god. I was totally wrong. So this is how I got conned. The first time I got conned was when I was trying to buy a car. That was two years ago. Two years ago, I was introduced to this Congolese guy who posed as a car dealer. A friend of mine introduced me to him. So I had a lot of faith in their process and in them, like my friend and the guy who who posed as a car dealer. So we had a chat and then we scheduled a meeting. But before that meeting, I took the initiative of telling my husband what was happening. So I told my husband of this guy, this Congolese guy I, I, I was introduced to by so and so. And he's a car dealer and seemingly his deals are good. And I think we can save some money, like a lot of money actually. If we buy a car through him and not trying to import by ourselves or getting a car from a from a local yard so we were trying to import a foreign used car uh, in Kenya most people call them new cars but actually they are foreign used because they are not assembled here in Kenya so we met this guy okay my husband was hesitant he wasn't for it but women being women I really convinced him and I really got mad and I was like, how can you see how good this deal is? We are going to save like 150,000 if we buy from him because we had done research. We had we had walked around uh, Kayabs here in Nairobi. Uh, we had uh, we had done inquiries in Mombasa and we had even tried to look into ways of importing a car by ourselves but this guy's deal was really good it was a nice deal so i i could get really mad anytime my husband was like you don't know this person you don't even know him what if he ends up conning us you know this nairobi people have really been conned especially these foreigners especially okay I'm sorry to say this, but most foreigners here in Kenya, I don't know why they have a bad name, but I don't believe all of them do bad things. But my husband was hesitant, but I was like, not every foreigner is bad. You know, this guy I was introduced to by so and so and so and so is a person to be trusted. She's well known to us, so why not? So I got really stubborn and I had to get what I wanted to get. So yeah. We went, okay, we scheduled a meeting. We went with my husband. My, hu my husband talked to this guy. And uh, he was like, okay, if your instincts are, are quite sure about this, let's just go for it because you have insisted. But should anything go wrong, just know I'll blame you for the rest of our lives. And I was like, it's okay. I have a feeling things will go okay. And so nothing to worry. Let's go for it. So the next meeting we scheduled with this guy and my husband so my husband really insisted for us to have that agreement done at the lawyer's office so this guy was like actually i have a lawyer because i'm in this business i have more i have many clients like you guys who can't do any paperwork that involves money minus a lawyer so i have a lawyer friend of, i have a lawyer friend of mine we can actually go to him and his rates are cheaper so yeah, we went to the lawyer's office, we came up with an agreement, everybody signed and uh, the down payment this guy had asked for was 50,000 Kenya shillings. 
so you were like okay that makes sense to us because it's not even a quarter of the total amount the total buying price of this car so we uh, we went to the lawyer's office and then at the lawyer's office there were some red flags but i was so quick to to put off or rather brush off my husband when he was trying to tell me because i was i just wanted everything to be perfect i was not going to stop at anything until i get this good deal like i didn't even want to focus on any negativities i just wanted to focus on the positive side of everything so red flag number one was you see the the guy had sent us pictures and uh and details of the car like specifications of the car we we had settled on now on the agreement my husband realized on the agreement okay the car model uh and, and or can i call it brand was the same but there were some details that were a little bit different like the year of manufacture and what else color yeah even the color was different because uh, uh the pictures the guy sent us the car was uh navy blue in color but in the agreement it was written silver so when my husband called me aside and he was trying to tell me that i was like you know that's just a slight mistake so let's not dwell there let's just focus on the on the main thing that brought us here let's get this business done so another red flag red flag number two so this guy him being a foreigner okay so red flag number two happened when now it was time for us to pay the down payment the guy had asked us to pay so my husband was like okay we, we must do a bank transfer because uh I, I cannot do cash and the guy was insisting no just pay me in cash go withdraw the money just pay me in cash my husband was like no i can't do that i can't do that because should anything go wrong i need at least evidence of payment and that will make my work easier when it comes to following up the case should anything go wrong so the guy was like you know i am a foreigner i am a refugee we don't have bank accounts here so but the number the guy used uh, was using when we were communicating was a safaricom a uh, kenyan number so uh, automatically it had mpesa i know okay not everybody has activated mpesa but this person has been in business do you want to tell me all the people that he has transacted with have been paying him on cash basis so at that time i wasn't thinking that much apparently so my husband really insisted on uh, at least doing an mpesa transfer if not a bank a bank transfer so the guy was hesitant he was kind of not okay with that he went outside made a few calls here and there then he came back but he wasn't looking happy when he came back to the office but he was like okay it's okay you can just send through my mpesa it's just fine but you know if you're sending through mpesa then you must include the uh the fee that i'll use to withdraw the money then you were like it's okay so we paid him and then uh we sealed the deal we signed the agreement everybody went home with their copy and then now the car was to arrive a month later so one month later no communications from this guy and then we gave him an additional of five days from the deadline so one month five days later this guy is not communicating and uh, on trying to call him is either not picking or the next thing you know it's user busy user busy all the time and then when we tried reaching him on whatsapp we realized the guy had already blocked us on whatsapp so what do we do we went to his he had a business that we knew of apparently that's where we met uh, my husband and i met that guy now for the second meeting because the first meeting was between the guy and i and then the second meeting happened between my husband uh, the guy and i so the second meeting happened at at his business at his business premises so we went there to look for him but he wasn't there and then the management of the house told us that guy moved away and now we we had no idea where the guy had moved to now we started kind of like hunting for uh, hunting him down 
and they were now asking border guys here and there where did so and so move his business to and then finally we we got a lead we got a lead and we found him and he was like you know i didn't i was i was not like trying to run away i didn't move from that place because i was hiding from you guys that place was not good for business the place was kind of hidden and the rent was high so i had to find somewhere better so he explained to us and we kind of understood him and he told us you know what there there is a okay there are a lot of things that are involved when it comes to importing a vehicle the logistics now you have to give me like uh two weeks just give me two weeks more and your car will be here do you know the guy was even showing us pictures and communication about the car the car we were waiting for so he was that smart because he knew it was bound to happen like a time will come now we'll be asking him uh where where is the car because he knew right from the word go there was no car that he was going to import so i think it's a cartel if i'm not wrong it's a cartel so they had to cook some messages they came up with some charts and they uh, the guy showed us the charts and we fell for it and we gave him an additional two weeks and then after those two weeks no communication apparently this guy used not to communicate to us telling us the progress it was us who could look for him so two weeks later no communication okay we gave him an additional one week to see if he'll communicate but apparently there was nothing of the sort now it was um, one month uh and almost four weeks but the agreement was saying at most one month the car will be here in nairobi kenya so uh the next thing we knew the guy was now okay it was now it was like a a, a cat and mouse game like we try looking for him and then when he has we've looked for him somewhere he, he was he was just trying to avoid us somehow now so luckily somebody told us now when we were just in, doing inquiries like investigations we want to know if we can get somebody who knows this guy well because apparently now when we went back to ask that friend of ours about the guy like details the friend was like you know even me a friend of mine was the one who introduced me to this guy so i don't like really know him that much and even me i i paid him money to uh to to import a car for me actually i'm also worried because i, I also paid him money like three months ago so we started investigating the guy asking people here and there so we met a certain a certain lady who told us you know that guy is a con he conned me three million he was uh he pretended okay he just posed as a car dealer and he was to import me a certain type of car and i just paid him cash like i paid him everything so it had now hit us like our our, our worst fears had been confirmed now this guy is a con now what do we do where do we go from here so it really sunk like we've been conned now what do we do now it was time to hunt him down and get him arrested because now he was nowhere to be seen no communication his number is not going through and now it's it was evident that we had been conned so we really tried looking for him for like a month again but luckily we got hold of him he got arrested and uh, he was taken to the police station uh then we we wrote a statement and all that luckily what made our case easier is the fact that we had uh, evidence of payment the mpesa mpesa is like mobile money transfer here in kenya so we had uh mpesa we, and then uh, we had the agreement from the lawyers uh office yeah so that made our case easier because the other person who was involved they didn't have any agreement and uh, out of all the money she had paid this guy the only money that had evidence of payment was like quarter of it so the only money she managed to get back was that amount now the guy when he was arrested he was like okay yeah i'll pay you back your money but i don't have it in cash so i'll have to pay you the money in installments and now we were already in that mess now what do we do he has agreed to pay the money but he will not pay the money 
at once it will be paid in installments and you know if you've been okay if you have solid cash like you've been accumulating money you want to do something with it and now uh maybe when you've lost money and you're trying to recover the money and it's being paid in bits that money doesn't really help you so but we had no other option we had to just wait until that day he'll finish paying and now another problem kenyan police you know they can never do anything for free like they can never help you for free so the police were like okay we'll help you but we'll need a percentage of this money too and now because there is nothing we could do we were like it's okay so we managed to recover the money but my husband was really mad at me because he had warned me and now this was a loss we've lost money uh we, we are trying to recover in the process of trying to recover the money we are still losing more money yeah so my husband was really mad at me and uh, like i don't even know how to put it but it was a lot like you know he had told me you know should anything go wrong i'll entirely blame him. and i was like yeah 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 i'll take the blame because i'm 101 percent sure that nothing will go wrong this deal will just go smoothly and everything will be okay so i'm now in this space i am being blamed and i'm actually taking all the blame because honestly it was my fault it was my fault that we lost money so it was a roller coaster of emotions here and there like uh ups and downs in the household in our household but i uh, there is nothing much i could do like we've already lost money but i learned some lessons lesson number one if somebody isn't ready to do anything don't coerce them into doing it just let a person do something when they are really really sure about it and when they are ready to do it number two if you're married it's always good to listen to your partner because there is no way you'll always be right you know i i could get mad when i'm seeing like my husband is kind of hesitant doesn't want to go this direction and you know because i wanted to get what i wanted to get i could really really get mad so i really learned like in marriage you don't just decide that things are going to be done your way and only your way like it's either my way or no way like my say is final it will really cost you a lot it will really really cost you a lot so that happened i learned my lessons but less than one year <laughs> again seemingly i didn't learn my lessons very well i fell in another trap again like i didn't see it coming this involved a childhood friend who has told me of this deal okay the second time i was conned i was conned through i don't know if i should uh, call it multi-level marketing or pyramid scheme something of the sort it was called live auction if you're in kenya i know you must have heard of live auction people really lost money there i was one of them so i had started investing okay when i started investing there i started investing with some little amount then i did two times the money came back with profit and now the third time i decided you know what I'm now going to invest 100k because I remember a uh, 100k investment could give me like 90k profit so I was expecting 190,000 so I I fell for that trap again I did I did live auction I bid it was about bidding and I did the first time I did I think I used uh, I tried with the minimal amount the least amount was 1200 it came back with profit it was almost 3000 came back the second time I, I invested again with was it 3000 or 5000 the money came back with profit now the third time I now decided I'm going to bid with 100000 for 12 days and then I will get myself 190,000 so that one went really bad and it almost cost me my marriage like things went from bad to worse it was really really bad it was really really bad so in my next video I'll tell you if I managed to recover the money how things transpired after that uh, how it really changed me as a person and uh, how it really changed my relationship 
yeah so stay tuned and let's meet in my next video